The word cancer can be intimidating, but in some instances, we can prevent certain cancers from advancing into life-threatening stages. Cervical cancer, if found at an early stage, can be treated faster and more effectively. So let's take a look at how we can take action to be proactive. Together, knowledge and protection is key for survival. Now, before getting into the facts about cervical cancer, let's take a look at the anatomy of the female reproductive system so that we can have a better understanding of our bodies. The female reproductive system is comprised of the ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina, and a cervix which connects the uterus to the vagina. There is a left and right ovary which are responsible for producing eggs. Once a month, one of the ovaries releases an egg that is swept into the fallopian tubes to be carried to the uterus. If there is no fertilization or implantation, the lining of the uterus sheds, resulting in a monthly bleeding which is commonly referred to as your period or menstruation. If the egg is fertilized by a sperm, it would usually implant into the lining of the uterus to develop into a baby, which would result in the absence of your period. After menopause, your ovary stops producing eggs, which will also result in the absence of your period. During your regular gynecology screening examinations, the outer part of your cervix can be examined by a medically trained professional to see and test for any signs of precancerous or cancerous cells. In the Caribbean, cervical cancer is prevalent, and it is one of the top three most common cancers found in women. The Caribbean region has high mortality rates for cervical cancer, but there are ways to catch the disease early to treat and prevent many of these deaths. Here are two risk factors you can limit or avoid to lower your chances of developing cervical cancer. The first is smoking, which doubles your risk of developing cervical cancer. The second and biggest risk factor is the nature of your sexual activities. Having multiple sexual partners, sex before 18 years old, an existing sexually transmitted infection, or having unprotected sex can increase your risk of contracting the human papilloma virus, or HPV. Exposure to HPV is a critical factor for developing cervical cancer, so let's discuss it in more detail. There are over 100 types of HPV. Not all cause serious health problems. In fact, many do not cause symptoms and go away on their own. Some strains infect the outer layers of the skin, causing warts on the hands and feet. Other strains of HPV affect the genital area and can be categorized as either low-risk or high-risk. The low-risk HPV strains cause genital warts, which are not cancerous. However, high-risk HPV infections occasionally progress to cancer. Two common high-risk HPV strains in particular are responsible for 70% of cervical cancer cases. In the general population of the Caribbean, about 16% of women are estimated to be infected with high-risk HPV at any given time. High-risk HPV is sexually transmitted, whether it be oral, anal, or vaginal. However, direct skin-to-skin -skin contact with the genitals of an infected person is enough for you to become infected. HPV can also be passed from a pregnant mother to her baby, which can cause lesions in the infant's throat and cause difficulty breathing. Once infected, your body attempts to clear the infection, but this isn't always possible. Having a compromised immune system greatly reduces your body's ability to control the infection and further increases your risk of harboring HPV. Most women infected with high-risk HPV do not show any symptoms. This is a big problem as those infected may unknowingly spread the infection to other sexual partners and also miss the opportunity for an early diagnosis. Early diagnosis decreases the chance of small abnormalities in the cervical cells from becoming cancer. For this reason, it is important to take control of your health by having regular gynecological examinations of the cervix with a pap smear. Women between the ages of 21 and 65 should have a gynecological exam every year. Starting at the age of 21, a pap smear is recommended every three years to screen for cervical cancer. Between the ages of 30 and 65, you can talk to your medically trained professional about the possibility of opting to have a pap smear done every three to five years with an HPV test if available. The pap smear can be done by your medically trained professional. It is performed by inserting an instrument called a speculum into the vagina, 
which allows for a clear view of the cervix. You might feel some pressure or discomfort as the speculum is inserted. A cotton swab or small brush will then be used to take a sample of the cells from the cervix. Alternatively, the cervix may be swabbed with a vinegar solution to immediately observe any changes. This does not cause irritation. Samples may also be taken of any concerning areas for further investigation. These exams only take a few minutes. The pelvic exam and pap smear may feel invasive or intimidating, but having this test done is important for taking care of yourself and your body. The results of a pap smear may vary. If the test is normal, you simply continue with your normal gynecological exam schedule. If the test is abnormal, your next steps will depend on the severity of the lesion. A low-grade lesion is a mild change and can often return to normal without treatment and just require more frequent pap smears to monitor for disease progression. A high-grade lesion means there are more distinct changes that warrant further investigation and treatment. After receiving your results, you can discuss with your medically trained professional the most appropriate means of care for you. After the age of 65, with the guidance of your medical team, it may be safe to discontinue screening with the pap smear. In addition to a pap smear, there are other means of prevention and protection against cervical cancer. As of recently, there is a vaccine that provides protection against high-risk HPVs. Currently in Grenada, there is a vaccine available to young girls that targets some HPV strains. There are no serious side effects associated with the vaccine. Talk to your medical professional for more information on this HPV vaccine. Other means of prevention include using condoms every time you have sex, as well as avoiding sexual relations with a new partner before speaking to him or her about any sexual transmitted infections. It's also important that you get comfortable looking at your own genital area as well as your partner's for any sores, warts, or abnormal discharge, as these can be signs of a sexually transmitted infection. These actions can also offer some protection from other sexually transmitted infections, such as chlamydia, gonorrhea, herpes, HIV, and syphilis. Some of these, such as HIV, severely weaken the immune system, making it difficult to fight other infections like HPV. Chlamydia and gonorrhea offer their own complications, possibly leading to chronic inflammation of the fallopian tubes, which can lead to an ectopic or tubal pregnancy or infertility. We should all do our best to make healthy lifestyle choices. Improving our nutritional habits, such as eating a diet rich in fruits and vegetables and not smoking, also reduces our risk of developing cervical cancer. Whether you have been consistent with pap smears or have never had one, there is no better time than now to start doing so. If you notice or feel any changes that concern you, for example, bleeding after intercourse or abnormally heavy or more frequent periods, please visit your health clinic or private doctor so you receive the proper care as soon as possible. You know your body better than anyone else, so speak up for yourself and take your health into your own hands.